as you've heard, at the Jewish Women's Archive, we don't just talk about history, we make history, and a little bit of trouble too. We do it by honoring women's achievements, by saluting women's accomplishments, by filling out the pages of the history books and the e-books and the websites so that our daughters and our sons will better understand their heritage and enthusiastically look forward to their future. After all, if you don't know what women have done, it's hard to imagine what women can do. Today, we honor women who have made history, and yes, made trouble, because if you challenge the conventional restrictions of your time, you are a troublemaker. And what a great room to celebrate what women can do. Looking out at the Statue of Liberty, looking out at the clouds that cover the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> who will be forever known to us in the spirit and the words of Emma Lazarus and the woman with a torch. In that spirit, in the light of that torch, we remember the women who built the world in which we live, those whose names we know and those whose names we may never know. Our grandmothers and great-grandmothers who traveled steerage with straw suitcases to a strange country, not knowing the language, not sure what awaited them, hoping only that here they could build a better life for their children. And the volunteers from the National Council of Jewish Women who realized the dangers of sex trafficking, which ensnared too many of these women. And so they went down to the docks and they began meeting young women at the docks as they got off the ships to protect them from further exploitation. Many of the women, the young women who died in the Triangle Fire, had been welcomed by Liberty's torch. And so had women like Rosa Schneiderman, who fought for the unions and the legislation that protected working men and women. In that spirit, I think of a young Golda Mayevich, who came to America to become Goldie Meyerson, and then left again to make a new life as Golda Meir in an even newer country. Of Henrietta Zold, traveling from New York to begin the public health system in Palestine, and then leaving again in 1933, when she was 73 years old, traveling to Germany to launch Youth Aliyah to save as many children as she could from the Holocaust. These are the women in the spirit of the torch. Emma Lazarus, who was horrified by news of Russian pogroms, who wrote of the need for a Jewish homeland even before Theodor Herzl, Emma Lazarus would be proud of them all and of the women we honor today. You'll hear from the honorees soon. My treat is that I get to introduce the woman who will introduce them. Now, you don't have to tell me that Gloria Steinem doesn't need an introduction. The New York Times told us that. <laughs> but I can't miss this chance to tell her and you how much I admire her. Gloria has been throughout her life an advocate for justice and against discrimination of any kind. She began as a journalist. Today, she is a writer, an editor, a lecturer, a feminist activist. Along the way, she co-founded Ms. Magazine, which changed not just what we call ourselves, not just our language, but the way we think of ourselves. She founded, was one of the co-founders of the National Women's Political Caucus, the Women's Action Alliance, the Women's Media Center. She's the author of at least three books of articles and countless speeches. In her books, in her speeches, in large meetings, in small strategy sessions, in everyday conversations, Gloria Steinem inspires us all by her example, showing us that we can stand up for injustice. We can speak out for a better world. We can do more together than any of us could ever do alone. Thank you, our friend, Gloria Steinem.